Is your chair like higher than mine? It's because I'm taller than you, Jimmy Jam. What's up with that? You getting old, God. baby. <laughs> Who are you telling? <laughs> anyway, when I met this guy, it was back in uh, 19 and 72. And what you have to do is you have to put the and in there because it's so long ago. 19 and 72. So Jimmy and I first met at a program called Upward Bound. We were both inducted into the program as peer teachers because we were both extremely good at math. At least I was, I don't know about Jimmy. When me and Terry first met, our influences in music were so different. I was, grew up listening to pop music my whole life and just got sort of Seals and Crofts in America. And I was excited when the new Chicago album was coming out and he was like, no, 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 you gotta get excited when the new Earth, Wind and Fires album or the new Tower of Power albums. Jimmy would introduce me to new music, you know, some Chicago or whatever. And I'd introduce him to some uh, new birth or parliament because I love the funk side of things. I gravitated towards him because I thought that he was just a cool guy to hang around. There you go. <laughs> Ditto. I can go. So I asked him, I said, hey, you play keyboards? He said, no, I'm really a drummer. I said, well, I got a drummer, man. I need somebody to play keys. The rest is history. Jimmy Jam is now a keyboard player. I joined the band, Flight Time, and that changed into the time about a year later. So when we got together to try to write, it would always clash. Because I was coming from this pop sense, he was coming from this funk sense. And not until we got into time and really started to perform over and over and consistently did it ever work. Out of that came a lot of what the flight time sound initially began to be, which was a heavy funk bottom with pretty pop chords over the top. I think to this day, you know, I call Terry lyric master. I mean, he is the lyric master. Terry's the one that did the vocals on Tender Love, and I mean, he gets great vocals out of out of uh, artists, and I think it's something that Terry really does a great job at. Thank you, Jimmy Jam. No, thank, thank you, Jimmy Jam. No, you're so well. 84, we started uh, our first Flight Time studio in Minneapolis. We had just witnessed Purple Rain. The world of music was starting to open up and not be as segmented and segregated. George Jackson and Doug McHenry called us about doing a song for this movie, Crush Groove. A lot of hip hop music and that kind of stuff. But it was kind of surprising because they wanted a ballad. Up to that point, we really hadn't done any ballads, uh, so to speak, but they wanted a, you know, a love scene in the movie. They said, yeah, we need a ballad. So we basically, when we wrote the song, we wrote the song based on this two and a half to three minute film clip. At that time, we went on a 24 hour schedule to finish the song because we had to have it turned around the next day. We didn't know who was gonna sing it. They told us, you know, we'll find somebody to sing it, but just write the song. Force MD flew to Minneapolis. The guys were so extremely talented. And when we started to cut the song, it started coming out so well. I mean, the vocal probably took, what, two hours? I mean, it was a really fast session to do. But no one in their wildest imagination ever thought it was gonna be accepted the way it was. One thing that uh, I think drives that song and makes it so cool, it's so simple. Um, it's very melodic, very musical, but so simple. If I was a wedding singer, I could sing that song. It's <laughs> that simple. Let's imagine you're a wedding singer. Sing a few bars. All right. I don't remember. <laughs> How's the song go, man? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounds so beautiful, don't you agree? Thank you, Terry. So now, <laughs> we're gonna do just a little bit, a little rendition of Tender Love, but just a little bit of it, because we're writers and producers, we don't really sing, as you will soon learn. Here we go. Here I lay. See, I let Jimmy Jam sing. Oh, come on, man, you got the mic. <laughs> I, it looks nice on me. Oh, <laughs> come on. Okay, here we go. Here I lay all alone. Toss and turn and longing for some of your tender love. I'm waiting for the right moment to come. So I can thank you for all the tender love you've given to me. Tender love, tender love so tender, pulling me close to you. Baby, I surrender. Oh. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> but Tender Love was really kind of that record that everybody said, oh yeah, Jam and Lewis, they can do ballads too. It kind of merged R&B pop culture with hip hop culture really well. It's probably the first singing hip hop song mm -hmm. that I can think of that was a, a huge pop hit, mm -hmm. even before it was an R&B hit. Yep, it was our first top 10 uh, record on the chart, the first of, I think, 41 now. Um, so, I mean, it's, for a lot of reasons, yeah, what, a Mr. Trivia, right? All right. <laughs> yeah, I know. They say he knows. Kind of well, from what I remember about Crush Groove, the thing that it had, it, that the other movies didn't have, it had a little bit more heart. There was a boy and a girl and musicians and love and turmoil. It was, it was all that life is anyway. So I think a lot, of, a lot more people related to that. The saying that people have, keeping it real, I think Crush Groove was just keeping it real. And that was a great opportunity for us, boy. We came along at a great time. It was just very, very cool experience.